G'day everyone, it's Justin and Scott, two dads again from, from Australia and today we're coming to you from something pretty special I guess, it's a BMW i8 Coupe, which is a electric hybrid car, yes. All right, mate, we've, we haven't driven a car for a couple of weeks, I guess, because we've had, you know, family things to do, I think. I yeah, know, a couple we're, of weeks. We're only a couple of amateurs doing this, aren't we? So I thought we'd come back with a bit of a bang. <laughs> I think you've done that. Yep. So I brought us down a BMW i8 Coupe. Now, this is BMW's sort of uh, halo tech car, I suppose, isn't it? It's a gorgeous looking thing. Oh, I'm just blown away by how good this thing looks from the outside. Oh, it's yeah. It's probably the, one of the most amazing cars I've ever seen. I, I have not driven a car that you get so many looks in than one of these. And I, I, I think it's the rarity of the car in Australia. That there, haven't, there aren't too many around. Um, probably a lot to do with the, the cost of the car as well, but we'll come to that a bit later. But um, just a bit of background about the car, I suppose, too, mate. This, this car comes from BMW, but it comes from their i division which was uh, set up to look at sort of, uh, you know, eco-friendly urban transport for BMW. Um, the technology that they use is uh, an electric engine in the front and a petrol engine in the back. It's all-wheel drive. Now, the electric engine in the front puts out, I think, it's about, if I check my notes here, um, it's a 96 kilowatt electric motor and it's directly over the front wheels yep. for weight distribution there. Um, and it's got a 170 kilowatt uh, three cylinder turbo um, petrol engine over the rear wheels, which comes from the Mini Cooper as well. <laughs> wow, so we've got a bit of Mini Cooper here. Yay! So that's, um, that's really quite a unique design compared to other things in the market, right? So it's, it's differentiated. It's like they've taken a different approach to everyone else. I, I guess yes and no. I mean, there's a lot of other manufacturers that do hybrids that do combination sort of petrol and, and electric motors. But people do. But in this sort of market, right? So I suppose I'm straight away comparing it to the Tesla that we reviewed previously. Ah, okay. Yep. So right, yeah. Yep. So and that's and that's like the pure electric. Yeah. Yep. Tesla's just pure. I mean, it's another that's another car that's in the same price bracket as this. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah so you're they right. took a very different approach to Tesla, for yep. instance. Yeah. Yep. 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 So I suppose I mean one way of looking at it is that I mean this has got a bit of sportiness to it too. I mean, not just about the looks, but just in the way it drives as well. I mean, like, you, hey, shove it into sport mode, may I? <laughs> oh, you certainly can, you know, I love my sports mode. So it's in sport mode. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it is true to BMW's sort of, you know, ultimate driving machine philosophy, isn't it? So. Um,
three driving modes, mate. It's got um, comfort, which it starts up in, which um, sort of, I think, uh, below about 65 k's an hour, it uses the uh, um, electric engine and then um, goes into the petrol engine above that. You've got Eco Pro, which is for maximum efficiency. So that's just, you know, um, energy recuperation and all that kind of stuff. But uh, then the one for us, I suppose, sport mode, gives you the maximum boost from the electric motor, um, you know, firms up the suspension, gives you better transmission response, everything like that. So it's, it's um, yeah, the, the combination, um, uh, you know, electric hybrid sort of um, setup gives it a range of about <clears throat> 600 Ks. Um, the electric motor on its own will only give it a range of about 37 Ks. But, you know, it's, it's designed for, you know, city driving for that mode, I suppose. It's like very it, yeah. interesting to have this sort of real sports car thing that is actually yeah. designed for the city. And it feels like that, driving it around. This feels like a really easy daily drive. It, it, yeah, yeah, it is actually. I mean, even though, you know, it can be a little bit awkward to get in and out, if you, especially if you've got a short skirt on or something. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Um, but, mate, no, it's it's an easy car to drive around town, yep. isn't it? Yep. The ride's nice. It's, it's not too firm as you would probably think a, a sports car would give you from uh, you know the looks that it's got yeah. but um, it's quite quite supple around town like it's it's quite controlled um, so I think of all the cars we reviewed and I've driven over the years this is got to be for me the sitting position in this car has got to be one of the most comfortable cars I've ever been yeah okay and just right. and, and to your point earlier getting into it challenging yeah but um, once you're in oh wow it just feels great yeah uh, it's that low yeah. sitting down nice and low and yeah yeah I mean, the, the, the C-pillars, you know, are a bit big, so, you know, parking, it's got sensors, it's got cameras, it's got, you know, the camera that goes over the top of the car as well, and yep. everything, so, you know, it's it's not that difficult to, to, to park and, and to manoeuvre, um, you know, you just probably have to be aware of the width of it, I suppose, at the back especially, like it's got, you know, big arches at the back, so, yes. yeah, I think the interior cabin is, like, if you were a BMW owner, you wouldn't. I mean, you'd feel right at home. It's it's sort of a more uh, uh, futuristic sort of in, in, impression about it, but yes. it's still BMW, isn't it? So, yep. yeah. so you got the high drive system. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. So the styling feels similar, but a bit more futuristic, maybe. Yeah. 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 A little bit different that one. Yep. So. Yeah. The uh, the light blue. I'm sure there's a technical name for the light blue, but uh, the light blue blue design hints all around the car outside and inside are just magic I think yeah I absolutely yeah, love yeah. that it's got that it's funny it's a six-speed auto too so you know a lot of cars have eights and nines and things like that but they're, they're stuck with a six-speed auto on it so. which is nicer when you're using the paddles right because yeah. eights nines too much activity <laughs> right really I'm not a race car I'm trying to drive around the city you get RSI don't you yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> so I think the six is better <laughs> Well, the Tesla, as we found out, is very quick in a straight line. Oh, just, yeah, it is. It's yeah. crazy fast, yeah. But, but I've got to say, this is more of an all-rounder in terms of um, the uh, the way, uh, the sportiness of the car. It's, it, it handles well. It's got 50-50 weight distribution. Um, you know, it, it's sporty to drive. Um, yes. and, and it is quick in a straight line. Probably not as quick as the Tesla we drove. It does 0 to 100 about 4.4. Um, I think it's... Um, uh, 2.1 litres per 100 kilometre fuel consumption, where the Tesla's zero, I suppose, because it's full electric. Yes. Um, but, you know, this, I've got to say, is probably more fun to drive than the Tesla. Yeah, so is this more a traditional car for car lovers? You've got a bit of, it's not the pure electric experience, this sort of has a bit of, a bit more of a driver's experience? Yes. Yep, because yeah, we're really getting great is. exhaust notes and things. Yeah. It's not that pure electric feel. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, I love the Tesla, I love what it's done. Yeah. But, you know, if you, if you don't want that pure electric experience, this seems to be a great combination. Yeah. Just from the first few minutes of driving the car. Yeah. That engine, though, wow. Well, the funny thing is, is that, you know, a lot of people online have, have sort of canned the car about the engine note saying it's artificial and yes. stuff like that. But, you know what, I like it. I don't oh, mind it at all. It sounds fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's not really I, I suppose that noise, where I probably think great. it's okay is because the performance is matching the note. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like we're going around in a, yeah. in a one litre car that's going north to 115 seconds and it's making and a funny noise. And it like sounds a great like a noise. Ferrari. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this thing has got the performance to match. Yeah. Right? Like it just yeah. takes off beautifully from I mean, the rest. The, the combination sort of electric 
um, petrol engine set up here, 266 kilowatts, 570 newton meters of torque. Yep. And it only weighs 15, sorry, no, 1,485 kilos. So it's less than so one and a half So the weight is the key here, right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah because it's it's a lot of carbon fibre in the in the car. Like, it's got a big carbon fibre um, passenger tub. Um, yeah, so it's it's just, you know, sort of built for um, sporty performance, isn't it? So, yep. yeah. Look, the price of this car, that, that probably leads on to a good point. The price of this car in Australia... <laughs> Um, and I'm glad we're sitting down here. <laughs> the list price of the car, 298955 So I get some change to my 300000 Well, no, not quite, because then you've got to pay for it to get registered. In New South Wales, where we are, um, you have to pay 5% stamp duty uh, on the car, which is about fourteen grand, I think, on top of it. Um, but again, it's not BMW's fault. I mean, there's a luxury car tax in Australia that yes. actually, for cars over fuel efficient cars over seventy five and a half thousand dollars thirty three percent thirty three percent of of that money goes straight to the government which you know like sucks yes it does <laughs> big yes. time it's, it really hurts us doesn't it if you if you like really good cars yeah and you're willing to spend a bit more money it's uh, yeah. very frustrating yeah I mean I looked at uh, <laughs> what you would pay for this car say in Europe and and say the UK and and the US and that and in both countries you're paying under two hundred thousand Australian for the same car so you know we, we get we get slammed in Australia about stuff like this and that's probably why unfortunately this car is pretty rare because you know if, if you're paying this kind of money um, there are a lot of exotic cars you could buy isn't it I mean even in BMW's own range you've got um, you know like uh, M6s and things like that you could buy you could you know go straight to the Porsche dealership if you wanted to or something like that so Yes, it's, yeah. yeah, if I had 320 grand or something, yes, that's that's right. There's a lot you could choose from. Yeah. Yeah, it would be a really a hard decision. Yeah. yeah. But so, so I think if this, what, what, where does this one sit in that? I mean, this is an exciting car. It's certainly one that turns heads. Oh. We just drove down a street before and like the two guys just completely stopped what they were doing and turned all the way around yeah. 360 yeah. degrees yeah. to watch it go past. Yeah. It's like, yeah, so this is a real head turn. Yeah, so I guess if, if you're looking for something that, you know, is... is pretty unique and it's um, head turning and that definitely one of these yep. um, and I suppose this one it, it feels very practical or you could drive it around the city really easily this car yep. so yeah I, I would have no issue with driving this today every day is my daily drive around the city it doesn't have the practicality if we're going to go back to our fun family fun thing. Yeah, there is no practicality at all about it, this. It's got a you know pretty tiny boot. Yes. Um, you know the, the seats in the back. I mean they're only for kids. You, you can't put adults in the back of that. I mean I tried. I think you know you've tried and yep. it's it's not. it's not suitable. Like no. you sit too upright and everything like that. Your head hits the top. But for kids it's fine. Um, but so if you're going to have a Tesla or this car in the garage, do you have a preference? Oh, don't do that to me. Oh, no, come on. It's don't like we're talking me. about exactly the same amount of money. If they effectively achieve the same goal, well, they're pretty similar. Oh, Scott, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Tesla, I think, it's got the practicality. It's got um, the range on electricity and everything like that, which is, you know, the, one of the big handicaps that you think about electric-powered cars. So, yes. you know, it beats all that. Um, but I've got to say, this will probably give you more fun to drive. It's a more fun to drive car than a Tesla. So I guess you'd have and to wait. The Tesla it up. yet is probably more practical because that's full yeah. full seats yeah, and everything. Boot. It's a big um, boot. Yep, greater range yeah. and electric. Yeah, yeah. yeah everything yes, there. But this thing, like, it's you know, it's a sports car. That's that's the reason. Yes. Yeah. That's and it, and it drives, it handles, it performs like a sports car. Yeah. All right, mate. You've had a drive of the i8. What do you reckon? Well, firstly, thank you. Wow, what a car. Um, yeah, terrific, terrific uh, concept by BMW. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a car I could drive every day really nice, you know, really enjoy driving. Um, and I've got to say, I can't believe the amount of turn, uh, heads that turned when we were actually driving this yeah, car. Yeah, it's, it, it's so, yeah, definitely a head turner. So, obviously. you know, it's, it's it's an expensive car. You know, unfortunately in Australia, it's probably, you know, the, the value for money you'd have to question just because of all the taxes. So that's not BMW's fault. Um, but uh, in, in terms of a head turner, if you've got the cash, wow, this thing turns heads, it drives beautifully. Um, it's so much fun. Yeah, um, yeah. 
and I suppose we relate it back to our family friendly, fun and family friendly. This is the five on fun. Um, it's probably not that family friendly, no, not much boot space, only in room for small kids true, in the back. True. Um, yep. But yes, it's it's a great car. Yeah, no, I agree with you, mate. It, it, I, I just think it's such a shame that, you know, that we in Australia can't buy this car at the same price as what people mm. purchase it overseas. So I think, you know, you know $200,000 Australian is what you pay in Europe and in the US yes. for one of these. Yet we get stung because of the government, I suppose. Yep. Um, yeah. Just, what, if you want something different to the Porsches, the you know everything mm -hmm. like that, um, one of these, I tell you what, you know it's it's different. I, I it would is. say don't discount this car no. until you've driven it. If you're going to go and spend that sort of money on another car, yeah, come and drive this thing because it is a yeah. dif different proposition. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, I'm just so blown away by it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Great car. Great car. All right, Scott. Do I have to ask that last question, the X-Factor question? Oh, you should ask it. It's an important one today. Okay. X-Factor question, what would you do? If I'm walking back from this car and walking into the shops or I'm going past some glass and looking at myself, <laughs> I'll, I will own this car for 10 years and I'll still look back at it as I leave it. This is an amazing looking car. Mate, you're right. I mean, even I think just recently we went off and got a coffee and people are just looking at this thing left right and south uh, there was some they? kids came up there was a guy must have been in his late 80s came up had a look at the car and some other guys just yeah. sitting around everyone wants to look at this, this car, car. Yep. yep that's right so a bit of consumer advice if you're a shy person don't buy one of yep. these no. yep <laughs> um just want to put out a great big thanks again to our friends at north shore bmw for the loan of the i8 today and um, again, thanks to everybody else out there because uh, I think our views were over 200,000 views now, which is yep. great. Pretty good for a couple of average dads, I suppose. <laughs> um, and look, uh, thanks again. And um, I guess we'll see you next time. If you want to keep watching, we'll keep churning them out. We'll see you later. Thanks, guys.